If there is one thing that keeps most fish keepers awake at night, it's what will happen to my tanks when there's a power outage. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from TozawaTanks.com. So I've shared in other videos about things that uh, kind of drive me nuts and things that I don't like about the aquarium hobby. One of those uh, is uh, equipment failures, whether it be due to the equipment breaking or also a power failure. And there are some things that you can do to kind of protect yourselves in the event that that should happen. When we think about our aquariums and the life support systems that we have uh, that we're utilizing to keep them uh, running, um, we're thinking about filtration, heaters, uh, you know, water movement, etc. In the event of a power outage, a lot of those things are not really necessary. The most important thing is to make sure that you continue to have oxygen in the tank. What you don't want to happen during a power outage is for everything to kind of go still and not to have any type of surface agitation. The most important thing when the power goes out is to ensure that you have some way of moving water in your aquarium and uh, that's going to at least make sure that the fish have oxygen so that they're not going to suffocate. Having the filtration go down for a few hours, having the heaters go down for a few hours, it's not going to be the end of the world, but if you are, you know, a few to several hours down the road without any movement in the tank, you could have some challenges. Now, if you're completely in a pinch, you know, you can manually do it so you can get like a, a ladle and kind of stir the water every few minutes. Um, you can get a bucket and drain some water out of the tank and pour it back into the tank and kind of do that once an hour or so to kind of mix the water up and get some oxygen in there. But obviously you can't sustain that for a lengthy period of time or, you know, you might have to go to sleep and you don't want to have to wake up, you know, every hour to pour a bucket of water out of your tank and pour a bucket of water back in. So like I said, there are a couple of things that you can do to uh, kind of uh, set yourself up for success in the event that the power does go down. One way is to have a battery operated air pump. So this is just kind of a small portable air pump that you can use in the event of emergency. If you're moving fish, if you're moving across the city or the state, etc. It is a pump that operates on just battery. So you just you know, put an air stone in it, put it in the, uh, the body of water that your fish are in, hit the switch, it bubbles, and it will last for hours and hours and hours. I have one here. This one is made by Marina. It is a battery operated air pump. I bought this one from aquariumcoop.com. I'll put a link below in the description so that you can see where I got it. Um, the kit does come complete with everything that you need except for the battery. So it has a pump, it has the airline tubing, it has um, the air stone. So it comes as a complete kit so you can actually just start using it right away um, once you get the batteries this one operates on D batteries so I have this little one for my marine tank you can probably hear it now and and see it behind me um, and uh, this little uh, reef tank here um, in the event of a power outage I want to make sure that I continue to have uh, water circulating in the tank so I bought this pump specifically for this tank and I've also instructed um, my family on how to use it so if I'm out of town if I'm traveling if I'm not home they know how to uh, put the air stone in there hit the switch and know that this tank will be fine for several hours. Obviously when that power comes back on, um, they can turn it off. Being that I'm in California, we don't have a lot of power outages, but they do happen from time to time. Uh, we recently had one um, not too long ago that lasted for about an hour and a half or so, and it really kind of got me thinking about what I need to do to ensure that my systems continue to operate if something does happen. The only other little extra thing that I did with this pump is I did put a one-way valve on it. I think those one-way valves are like a dollar ninety-nine. They're also available from Aquarium Co-op. So. Um, that is a good way to ensure that when um, the pump is off, that water doesn't get siphoned back up through the tube and damage and ruin your pump. So if you're running any kind of air pump um, that runs on regular airline tubing, my recommendation is to put one of those one-way valves on there because it really will save you uh, in the event of any kind of uh, failure. It's gonna save your equipment and a $1.99 piece of plastic is gonna keep you from ruining one of your pumps. Okay, so that seems pretty simple. You know, if you just have one or two uh, tanks in your home, you can easily get those. Uh, I forgot the price, but they're really inexpensive. Um, so you can, you know, purchase one of those battery pumps and just have it on hand and make, make sure you have extra batteries. So if you do have a power outage, it even lasts for, you know, a full day. You can just run that thing on your tank and ensure that your tanks are getting oxygen and everything should be fine. So what do you do if you have a lot of tanks, multiple tanks? So in my case, I have... 35 tanks. I'm not going to buy 35 air pumps and have to have 
70 D batteries on hand to <laughs> run around and have all of those attached to my tank. So um, there are some other things that you can do. Um, you might have heard some of the battery backup systems that are available. Um, I think that Ecotech or one of those companies makes one. Um, it's kind of expensive and uh, I, I'm not sure if it works for all equipment. I know it works with their own kind of wave makers or whatever. But anyway, um, having some type of battery backup system besides just the battery operated air pump is an option. Um, I actually did that for these two tanks right here. So. This tank behind me is my Tanganyikan tank, and this is my Malawi tank. You've seen this before in other videos. And what I did is I took just a regular air pump that has uh, two outlets. I connected air tubing. I put one-way valves on um, both tubes, so a one-way valve for this tank and a one-way valve for that tank. I put a never-clog air stone on there, so it never clogs. It'll just continue to run and, and flow air and I connected that system to a battery backup. So what I got for this tank, or these two tanks, is I got the APC uh, 600. It's a battery backup that's made for um, putting in an office to make sure that your computers and hard drives and things like that will continue to operate and for you to allow them to um, operate for a while in the event of a power outage or also um, you know, safely shut things down um, and not just have everything go out. They're also, it's also a surge protector. If the power goes out, the battery backup system kicks on and then the air pump will continue to flow for several hours putting um, that uh, air into the tank so that I do have that surface agitation. The AP systems are a little bit less costly than some of the ones that are designed specifically for aquariums um, and they do come in various sizes. So the 600 is uh, a little bit on the smaller side. They've got, um, I forgot the numbers, but like 1,000, 1,350, et cetera, some really large ones. Um, I'm gonna end up buying one of the larger ones, but it is like, $300. I'm going to buy a larger one for the downstairs air pump because I have that central air pump downstairs. So I'm going to buy one of the largest ones for that one. So that can run all 30 tanks on air should the uh, power go out. Um, as far as runtime, so um, I did the calculation. If you were using like a 100 watt um, uh, piece of equipment, the that piece of equipment would continue to operate for 23 minutes on the APC system that I have right here. So that's not a very long time. So you're not gonna wanna put a heater or anything like that on that. So if you had a 100 watt heater, essentially that heater's only gonna last for about 23 minutes before the battery runs out of juice. But an air pump runs a lot less energy. So the one that I'm running on right now is, I think it's 3.4 uh, or 2.6, I forgot what it was, but it's really, really on the low end. Um, I did a calculation and it's gonna run for several hours um, based on the um, runtime. I did a calculation on the runtime and the wattage compared to the original 100 watt with the 23 minutes. Um, so I have a lot of time here. So in the event that the power does go out, if the power's out for four or five hours, I'll continue to get air in there. And uh, again, here in California, we don't get those lengthy power outages. So you might be saying, okay, that's great. You can use a battery pump to uh, you know, run air to your tank for a few hours if you just have one or two tanks. Or you can do the battery backup system so it's automated. So if you're not home, it kicks on automatically and runs air for a few hours. Well, what if you have a larger you know, tank, if you have multiple tanks and, uh, or what if the power is gonna be out for a long time? What do you do then? Well, I did talk about uh, me getting a larger backup battery for this system because it's all um, run on uh, one central pump. So I will be putting a larger battery just for the pump. I'm not concerned about heat. I'm not concerned about anything else, only the air. Fortunately, most of these tanks have sponge filters. In fact, well, they all have sponge filters. So um, there will be some filtration in addition to surface agitation. But getting to the point, if you do have a lot of tanks and if it's gonna be a long time, you're gonna to wanna to get a generator. So I happen to have a generator, I actually purchased it during um, that power outage that I mentioned earlier. I think I spent around $700 on the, on the generator. So, you know, it's not inexpensive. I would say that it might be a little bit of overkill for some people, but again, for me, I have 35 aquariums. I'm breeding fish. I've got some fish that I want to ensure remain safe and unharmed in the event of a lengthy power outage. So I want to make sure that I can care for them if something were to happen. So for me, it made sense to invest in a uh, generator that would be able to supply power for an indefinite amount of time. 
all I need to do is just make sure I have enough gasoline on hand and uh, take care of uh, refilling the generator so that I have a continual power supply. So basically, I will be covered in a short power outage with the battery backup systems. I will get a couple more small ones. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to eventually get one for the little nano reef tank. Um, just like a really small one and uh, also uh, for the planted tank and then again i'm going to get that large one for this system down here i do have the generator so uh, i do have that option as well so again if if i'm home or you know if my wife is home they can uh, we can just turn on the generator you know stick the exhaust out the garage door run some long extension cords to the pumps and uh, we should be good to go so there you have it just uh, a few tips on how to uh, weather the storm. It's kind of winter time right now, especially for some of you guys in some really cold climates. Uh, you might have more frequent power outages. Hopefully you have some type of system. You have a generator, you have backup batteries, you have battery operated air pumps, something to just make sure that you have a plan to take care of your wet pets. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.